the first and the, the fader that is uh, simplest in its uh, idea that in one end of the fader you have verbal communication, talking like I'm doing now. In the other end you have physical communication, so that's everything else. So one end is talking, and if you have the fader to max, to verbal, then for example you're playing Dungeons and Dragons as it is intended in, in the book, where you sit around in a table and you, you say, my character walks across the stage and starts talking from the other end of the stage. So that's verbal communication. In the physical end of the scale, then I would walk over there without saying anything and you will realize what I did. And that's very simple communication, but if you do want to do very complicated stuff, then it becomes more tricky. But if you focus on the verbal communication, you get very clear communication because we are very good at talking, talking and listening. And there's very few misunderstanding of what is happening when I say I'm going to walk over there and stand in the middle approximately a meter from the edge of the stage, then everybody is sure where I am. But if I just walk over there, then maybe not everybody can see what is happening. And then there can be a little bit of misunderstanding. You are, very, of course, very limited in all the communication forms. You can only do it verbally, and that puts a lot of limits on how to interact with each other and show stuff. Because then I have to tell you, then I have to say, instead of sort of insinuating that I find you interesting, then I have to say, you are interesting. And the sort of level and how we communicate in real life uh, does not work that way, and then it becomes a little bit weird. And it also limits emotional engagement, because uh, we as people communicate a lot with how, which position our face are in, or our body language, and so on. And if you remove all of that, then you also remove the emotional engagement. In the other end, you get a lot of emotional connection, because if you have to move around and, and, and communicate only with your body language, and so on, then uh, it, you get, very, you get a very close emotional connection. And also, it becomes very playful, because we don't do that very much in our lives, because we are very much here in our heads, and not so much in the body. But if you're only in the body, then it becomes very playful. It's complicated to communicate. It takes uh, a lot of work. There's a steep learning curve, so you have to focus a lot on that uh, and, and learn about how to do that. Uh, and in the middle is probably most labs, and most of us communicate with body language, as I'm doing now, using my hands. There are some limitations to my body language because of the, the, the clicker and the microphone. So this, there are some limits here. Does that make sense? Later today, some of you guys are going to play White Death by Nina. Uh, it's a beautiful game where they, there's a lot of physical communication. This fader is going to be a lot clearer when you have played that game. So you're going to do it today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow. And I'll end with this. What do you want to achieve by focusing on physical or verbal communication in your lab? That is the question that you need to ask. What's going to happen if you do one or the other? Thank you.